The Cavalcade of America, starring Dana Andrews and Anita Louise. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you That Skipper from Stonington, starring Dana Andrews and Anita Louise on The Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. When you buy an article of rainwear or sportswear that is tagged fabric treated with DuPont Zealand durable water repellent, you know that you have a garment that is right for rain or shine. The gaily colored and modern styled garments that are available in Zealand treated fabrics afford protection when the weather is rainy and unpleasant and can be worn with comfort on bright sunny days as well. And Zealand protection is durable. It lasts through many washings or cleanings. Zeeland, it's one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, that skipper from Stonington, starring Dana Andrews as Richard Loper, with Anita Louise as Marty, on the Cavalcade of America. Begging your pardon, Captain Loper, but the sea's heavy for whaling. Heavy as smooth, Mr. Thomas. We are whalers. I've given orders. Carry them out. Aye, aye, sir. Hands to station. Ready to lower boat. Heavy or smooth, the old whalers ran the oceans with their spread of canvas, their gallant crews and captains who nosed their ships into the strange and far reaches of the seven seas. And Captain Richard Loper of Stonington, well, for him it was only a dream. Just a dream that filled his life to the exclusion of everything else. He wanted to be a whaler like his father and grandfather before him. But in the year 1820, Richard Loper found himself not a whaling captain, but the owner and skipper of... A passenger packet. A slab-sided, slow-crawling passenger packet. Oh, she's a fine ship, Richard. Oh, sure, for a packet. Tam, the first chance I get, I'll jump this tub and go whaling. You'll have to buy a new ship, Richard. That takes money. Equipment comes high. Listen, Tam, ever since I was knee-high, I've dreamed of whaling. Well, if my father could see me now, he'd tan my hide and disown me. You'll get your whaler, Dickie. Aye. And here she is in this cabinet. My model. Tam, is she good? Her lines. Do you think they're, they're all a whaler needs? Do you? Well, a uh, night to trim at the bow, a uh, spot more a keel. She'll do, Dickie. She'll do. And you'll build her <laughs> out of the best timber I can buy. We'll make her a whaler will sail a canvas off of every other ship. And you know where we'll go, Tam? Where there's whales, I guess. Yes, to the Antarctic. Down below, Tam. Yeah, but that takes money, laddie. I'll get it. I'll sail this scow back and forth and back and forth until I've got the money. Then we'll build our whaler. And never have to look at another passenger as long as we live. <laughs> There, yeah, that'll do it, Tam. Aye. This is to inform the passengers that after the present voyage, there will be no more service. Our last trip on this mud hauler. You've been dreaming of this for a long time, haven't you, Dickie? I remember my father coming home after the trips, filled with stories. Stories of men and ships and courage, Tam. The kind of courage it takes to run up against tons of fighting whale and nothing but a small boat. That's the life, Tam. Not this... Carrying of passengers with their everlasting troubles and oh, questions and demands and... Come, we'll go aboard. Careful now, dear. Mind your skirts. Here they right, come mother. now. Women. Oh, They're the worst. Oh, dear. I'm all out of breath. I'll be going below, Captain. All right, Tam. Young man, where will I find the Captain? At your service, madam. I'm Captain Loper. You? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Is something wrong, madam? You're awfully young to be a captain. I had my mate's papers when I was 15. Indeed? 
Marty? Yes, Mother? We'd better wait for another boat. But, Mother, we can't. You know we're expected in Philadelphia and... That can't be helped. Come along, Marty. Madam, if it's my youth that worries you, please remember that my ship doesn't know my age. Well, of all... Mother, Mother I'm sure Captain Loper is quite efficient. Captain, we have passage reserved. The name is Spooner. I'll have the steward take care of you, miss. Uh, we don't sail for four hours. I'm sure that will allow plenty of time. Uh, then you will please call the steward, Captain Loper. Delighted. Mr. Adams. Aye, sir. Come here, please. Aye, sir. Come in, sir. Now, if you ladies will excuse me. Certainly, Captain. And thank you for your courtesy. Not at all. And I hope your ship respects your manners as well as your age, Captain. Good day. That'll do it, eh, Tam? Hey, I'm certain, Dickie. That's enough money. Good. Now we'll start with that. Yes? What is it? May I see you, Captain Loper? Now, what she wants? I don't know, but I'll get rid of her quickly. I do that. We've lots to talk about. Yes, miss? I'd like to speak to you for just a few moments. Well, what can I do for you, Miss Spooner? May I come in? Well. Thank you. Oh, it's nice here. <laughs> I'll be leaving. Now, uh, Miss Spooner, may I present Tam McKelvey? He's my carpenter and builder. How do you do? As well as can be expected, miss. You want me more, Captain? Well, uh... Oh, what a beautiful little model. Did you make it, Mr. McKelvey? No, miss. Captain Loper made it. How very clever. A schooner, isn't it? Yes. Wonderful lines. Uh, could stand a little more keel, don't you think? What did you say? What's her tonnage? In scale, I mean. You seem to know a bit about ships, miss. <laughs> My father was a captain, too. Oh. oh, there's a harpoon gun forward. This is a whaler. Yes, that's right. Oh, I see. You're planning to build her. Hey, miss, that's correct. <laughs> She'll make a beautiful ship. You think so? I know it. Yeah, uh, well, uh, if you didn't want me more, Captain. Uh, uh, captain. What? Oh, oh, all right, Sam. I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, beautiful lines. Enough to make a man forget what he's about. What? The ship, lad, the ship. Good night. Oh, uh, excuse me, Miss Bonner. W will you sit down? Thank you. Well, I... Yes? You said you wanted to speak to me? Uh, I wanted to apologize for my mother. She was nervous and excited. Oh, that's all right. As a matter of fact, I, I was a little surprised at your age myself. Really? What makes you think old captains should be old? <laughs> well, I, I suppose it was because of my father. He had a beard. Oh, I had one once. Oh, I wonder how you looked. Well, I... Why did you take it off? Well, Miss Pony, you see, uh... Didn't you like it? No. It blew back in my face all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the reason for that notice you posted. What? The ship model. Yes. Tam and I start building this at the end of the run. It's a beautiful ship. I've lain awake nights thinking how she'll look under a full spread of sail. How she'll take the wind and handle to the wheel. How she'll ride a heavy sea or catch the tiniest breeze in a calm. You love the sea, Captain Loper. Yes, I do, if it means whaling. And why does whaling mean so much to you? Because it's the only thing for a man to do if he's a Stonington skipper. I stowed away on a whaler when I was ten. I see. Isn't it dangerous? Maybe. But it was dangerous for my father and my grandfather, too. I'd like to be worthy of them. Why, Captain Loper, how nice. Good afternoon, Miss Spooner. Oh, please come in. I hope I'm not intruding, Miss Spooner. Of course not. This is very nice of you to call. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. I, I... Yes? Well, this isn't quite a social call. I really came to return this case. You left it in the cabin. I did. Yes, and, uh... Well, here's the case. How careless of me to leave it... Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's a nice house? Mm, it's comfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've uh, been well, I hope. Oh, quite well, thank you. And you? Very well. Uh, How's your mother? Oh, well, thank you. Good. Uh, well, uh, you, you were, were saying... Th Marty, <laughs> that someone at the door? And... Oh, the whale man. 
How do you do, Mrs. Spooner? Well, thank you. Why, well, I, I came to return this case. You left it. Case? That one? Yes, ma'am. Why, well, I distinctly remember packing it. Mardy, didn't you see it when you opened the portmanteau to put your dress in? Uh, well, I, I... I don't remember. Oh. Well, thank you, Captain Loper. It's a very good thing our name and address was on it. Yes, wasn't it? Please excuse me. Do come again, Captain. When you can stay longer. What did your mother mean when she called me the whale man? I, um, I don't have any idea. Oh. Unless I may have spoken about you. I see. And the case? Uh, Captain Loper, uh, please don't imagine things. Am I? Uh, no. Miss Spooner, I've thought about you. And I'll admit I was very happy when I saw the case. Were you? Yes. What kept you? It's late afternoon. I was going to send Mr. Adams with it, but uh, I decided to bring it myself. Thank you. I thought about you. I thought all you dreamed about was ships and whaling. Well, there, there are other things. Miss Spooner, may I call again? Well, I'm, I'm free all week. Well, Tam and I have to visit the shipyards this week, you see. We're starting work on the whaler as soon as we can. Oh, I see. Very well, Captain Loper. At your convenience. No, wait a minute, Marty. I mean, I mean, Miss Spooner. Uh, yes, Captain Loper? Uh, is it all right if I call tomorrow? But, Richard, are you sure it won't interfere with your other plans? Yes, Marty. I am sure. <laughs> Tam. Tam. Hey, Tam. Oh, there you are, Dickie. What kept you? I had an engagement. Eh, almost every day for three weeks now you've had an engagement. When there's things to do here. You'll never get your ship built, only plans. How do you expect to go whaling with no ship? Well, Tam, we can't build it. You want to say that again, Dickie? I'm afraid I didn't hear you right. We can't build it, Tam. Why not? We got the money. You got the plans of the sweetest ship that'll ever go down the wings. I know, I know, Tam, but there's responsibility. Responsibility? What are you talking about? You hain't no one but yourself. You hain't no one but... Uh, you hain't no one else, are you? Look at me, lad. It's the girl, eh? I guess so, Tam. I know. She had good lines and a fine look. I can't build a ship now, Tam. At least not for a year. Maybe less. A married man has to look after his wife. Aye. She wanted me to go ahead with our plans for building, but but I couldn't. You see that, don't you? Aye, laddie, I see. Well, that's that. But we'll build it, Tam. I promise that. We'll build her and take her to the Antarctic. Aye. Not right away, but soon, Tam, soon. <laughs> Richard? Oh, Marty. What are you doing here? Can I walk with you? Oh, it's damp and chilly. I don't mind. Come on, let's walk. You didn't say you were going out. Oh, I, was, I was just restless, dear. I thought you were asleep. No. Ships are beautiful in the fog. Mm-hmm. Are you unhappy, Richard? Unhappy? What makes you say that? Oh, once in a while I feel as though I've kept you from something. From your life the way you would have lived it. No, Marty, don't say that. And you like this, looking at the ships, I... I feel it more than ever. No, Marty, no. Here, sit down. I'll put my coat down for you. Thank you. You know what I've been thinking about? Walking along here? What? Steam. Steam power on ships. What about it? What's the coming thing, Marty? It'll give speed and power that we never dreamed of with sail. Why, a ship could ram her way into the deepest part of the Antarctic. A whaling ship, for example? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will your ship have steam power? My ship? Yes. The one you're going to build. The whaler you've wanted to build ever since you were a kid. Yes. And do you know what, Marty? She's going to have ribs of iron. Iron? Oh, Dick, that's silly. An iron ship will sink. Not if she's designed right. Dick. What? Well, what do you want to say? <laughs> Reading my mind? I don't have to. I've watched you for weeks. I've 
seen you thinking and thinking. All right. I want to build a steamship with iron ribs. Ribs that'll be able to take all the power an engine can give. And a frame that'll stand up against anything. It'll take money to build a ship like that. I know. Where would you get it? We're well off enough, but I could borrow the money. Oh, no. No, don't borrow. The only other way would be to sell the passenger packet. You have enough faith in your new ship to do that. I do. But I've got to think of you. No, don't. Build the ship, Dick. And build it right. And the whole world will come to you. You are listening to That Skipper from Stonington. Starring Dana Andrews with Anita Louise on The Cavalcade of America. Sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for better living. Through chemistry. With his wife's encouragement, Captain Loper builds a ship with iron ribs. Almost immediately, success as a shipbuilder comes to him. But the dream of going whaling is still in his mind. However, once again, the dream cannot be realized. Look at him, Marty. Orders, 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 more orders than we can fill. Richard Loper, shipbuilder. Iron ships, Marty. The whole world wants them. We'll be needing more men, Dickie. We cannot do all this by ourselves. Then get them. Fill every order you can, and on time. How do you like it, Marty? A new house. A new house. And everything in it you've ever wanted. Dick. Yes? Why are you so restless? Who am I? I didn't notice it. I have. For weeks now. Oh, well, I guess it's just natural. Things have quieted down a little. Seems funny to be sitting around doing nothing. Tam was here this morning, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. He took the model with him, didn't he? Oh, yes. Oh, I thought we'd draw up a set of plans. Building a whaling ship? You don't mind? No, of course not. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Marty, we have everything. Everything we want. Home, enough money to be more than just comfortable. And... How long would you be gone? Gone? Where? To the Antarctic. Well, I... Marty, would you mind... It's been a dream for so long, and now that I can make it come true... How long would it be? Two years, maybe less. Oh. I won't go if you don't want me to. Oh, I want you to, Dick. I've felt through all this time that I've kept you from it. You won't be happy until you go. Maybe only a year and a half, with steam power. I know, but there's... There's only one thing that... What's that? A year and a half is a long... I shouldn't tell you right now, but... I can't let you go without your knowing. Knowing what? Well, a year and a half is a long time for a child to be without its father. Well, it's not so long, and... What did you say? Oh, Dick, I... Dick, I'm sorry. I... Sorry? Sorry? Oh, Marty. Marty, I'm... Oh, it's got to be a boy. Aye, and a fine youngster he is, too. Two years today, Tam. Aye. Have you told Marty yet? About the ship? Aye. Not yet. How does she look? Trim and sleek and aching to get underway. She will. Next month. You're sure? Well, there's nothing to hold me back now. Marty knows how it is. Uh, huh? What's the matter? Don't you believe me? Well, I will when I see us on deck full underway. All right, you'll see. And Dick! Dick, where are you? In here, Marty. What's the matter? Oh, Dick, the news. You haven't heard? Heard? No. What is it? The United States has declared war on Mexico. Captain Loper, we asked you to come to Washington for a very important reason. I'm at your service, Mr. Marcy. Well, here it is. We need 150 surf boats in 30 days. A hundred and... in 30 days? Can you build them? Well, that's a, that's a big order in a short time. Captain, we need them. 
General Scott cannot start this campaign without those votes. Delay means the possible failure of this plan. I see. Can you do it? Well, I can try, Mr. Marcy. That's not enough, sir. I, I know that sounds unreasonable and abrupt, but I cannot impress too much upon you the urgency of the matter. It means night and day work. I'll need men. We'll help you get them. All right. I'll get those votes for you. Good. I knew we could depend on you. Uh, Mr. Marcy? Yes, Captain? I suppose I'll be needed, too. Why, of course. You'll be in complete charge. Yes, I thought so. Why did you ask? Oh, it's no reason. No, no reason as important as the work I've got to do now. Did you read this, Dickie? Here, take a look. General Scott lands army near the port of Veracruz. Our boats did it, Tam. They did it. time you've wound the clock this evening, Dick. Is it slow? No, I'm just restless, I guess. Why don't you sit down and read the paper? I did. Sounds like a bad storm outside. It'll blow itself out before morning. Mm-hmm. Marty. Yes, dear? I've been wanting to talk to you about something for weeks, ever since the war ended. I know. When are you leaving? Huh? For where? Oh, Dick. Tam was here this morning. You two have been whispering together for days now. Well, you've got your chance to go whaling now. Marty, would you mind? I mean, really. No. There's nothing to keep you from going. The children are pretty well grown up. We've enough money. And the ship's been standing in the harbor for two years. Well, I was just wondering. I'm older, Marty. Lots older. But I still remember how it feels to have a deck under me and sails over me. There's nothing like it. Where are you going, dear? Look outside. Listen to the wind and rain as I used to. Mmm. Nasty night. You've been out and worse. You know, it's a very cheerful room, Marty. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm just laughing at me. For years, all I've dreamed about is taking my own ship into the Antarctic. And each time I thought I was going, something happened to stop me. I know, Dick. Oh, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. You've been... Very wonderful, Marty. You have too. Dick, go. Take your own ship and go where you please. You won't really be happy until you've done it. And, Dick, what are you doing? Marty, I'm a comfortable, well past, middle aged man. <laughs> I don't like what's out there tonight. It doesn't seem as romantic as it used to. You'll feel differently tomorrow. Oh, no, I won't. Now I've found out that I don't want to go anymore. So here I am, having done nothing. Nothing? Oh, Dick. What are the boats you built? What have you worked during the war? Don't they count? Well, yes. If you'd gone whaling, you wouldn't have done those things. No, Dick. You're not a man who's done nothing. You're a man who's given his country the best he could. No one could ask for a fuller life. And now? What about now, Marty? Well, that's still up to you. Yes, I guess it is. There's still work to be done. I can still build boats, Marty. Boats for our country. Maybe I won't go out on them, and maybe I won't sail them. But there'll be men who will carry our flag where I dreamed of sailing. Here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. For a dozen years now, nylon has been under intensive study and experimentation in the laboratories of the DuPont Company. We are learning more about it all the time. It's an amazingly versatile material. 
Today, with so many interesting possibilities for nylon coming to light in DuPont laboratories and through DuPont's cooperative experiments with the textile industry, it's hard to realize that little more than 12 years ago, nylon, the fiber and the material of which it is made, were unknown to the world. For nylon began as a result of the curiosity of DuPont chemists about the peculiar way molecules behave when they are joined together in long chains. They wanted to learn more about such chain molecules, and they attacked the problem through research. Out of their research came a fiber. The fiber became a yarn, and the yarn became hosiery. Hosiery that increased steadily in popularity until today... Over 500 manufacturers are making nylon stockings. And hosiery is only the beginning of nylon's story. With more yarn becoming available, textile manufacturers are putting nylon's outstanding properties to many other uses. There is nylon lingerie, for instance. There are nylon curtains, fishing lines, and surgical sutures. For industry, there are nylon cords for plane and automobile tires conveyor belts, V-belts, ropes, and filter cloths. We have received many requests for information about nylon from school children, from housewives, from executives, from designers and engineers. To meet these requests most helpfully, we have prepared a 12-page illustrated nylon booklet. In it, we have attempted to answer the questions you might ask. How nylon was discovered, how it is made, its chemical and physical characteristics, how to take care of nylon fabrics, the fields in which nylon is used at the present time, and a hint of things to come. If you would like a copy, it's yours for the asking. Just write to DuPont Radio Section, DuPont Company, Wilmington, Delaware, for this illustrated booklet about nylon, one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. First welcome little Amadeo Obisi received when he arrived in this country was the gift of a small bag of peanuts. This gift was to become the symbol of Amadeo's life and work in America. The symbol of a man who found in this country the opportunity to make a small thing great. For under Amadeo's hands, one small bag of peanuts grew first into an important local business and finally into one of America's largest industries. Be sure and listen next Monday to Peanut Vendor, starring Don Amici on the Cavalcade of America. Music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. That skipper from Stonington is based on the book of the same name by Theta Kenyon and was adapted for radio by Stuart Hawkins. Dana Andrews appeared through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn and may soon be seen in the RKO production Memory of Love. Anita Louise appears through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, producers of The Guilt of Janet Ames. In tonight's Cavalcade cast were Norman Field as Tam... Gloria Gordon as Mrs. Spooner, and Stanley Waxman as Marcy. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Don Amici in Peanut Vendor, and in coming weeks to Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Maureen O'Sullivan, and Ann Baxter on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.